After the first season of Heartstopper took the world by storm last year, the show has returned for a second season, as not only the relationship of Nick and Charlie was developed forward, but every single person in their friendship group was too. With individual battles that each and every character was trying to overcome in order to find self-acceptance, but also acceptance amongst others, it was a season that was gripping, engaging, yet heartbreakingly beautiful. So I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this season of the show. So let's get into it. Here is Heartstopper Season 2 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Oh. And if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to hit subscribe. Thanks. The best way to break this video down will be by delving into each individual character arc as they all had different endings. Let's start with Nick and Charlie. Nick and Charlie's story was very much split in two. We had most of the season focusing on Nick coming to the decision that he wanted to come out to the people at his school, his family, and the people that he was closest to outside of his friendship group. However, understandably, it was something that he was finding difficult to do, because he was fearful of the response that he'd get. The thing that was in his mind was the fact that when he came out to his mother at the end of Season 1, it was such a positive experience. And he knew that not everybody was going to be like that. Whilst he was on the school trip in Paris, the comments that would be getting made about Charlie and the fact that many people were casually throwing comments around about the hickey on Charlie's neck, it seemed as though it could cause some uncomfortable awkwardness in his mind. The mixed responses were best summed up when he came out to his father, and also when his brother found out that he was bi. They represented the main reasons as to why Nick didn't feel comfortable, because his brother was just rude and homophobic, and his dad didn't know how to handle it. But it was almost like once those two people were out of the way, Nick felt like the hardest part was done. He then almost didn't really care what people thought, and he posted that he was bi online, and that he was in a relationship with Charlie. He was happy with the life that he had and he didn't want to hide it, and I think to his surprise, most people out there were relatively supportive of him. Charlie was there for Nick in this season when it came to that arm of the story, and he wasn't pushy in making him feel guilty for not coming out sooner. This was because of the awful experience that Charlie had when people found out his sexuality. Charlie was on the receiving end of some extremely harsh bullying when people found out that he was gay. And this was something that made up the other arm of the story for the both of them. The fact that Charlie was still wearing the mental battle scars from being somebody who was made to feel like they were worthless because of who they were, and because they were different to everybody that was around them, was something that was prominent. That also paired with the way that Ben treated him in the past in using him and making him feel like a piece of dirt. It led Charlie to be indirectly acting on what happened without even truly realizing. For example, we heard that he said to Nick right at the end of the season that he used to hurt himself, and we saw that he was still doing it in the present day, but not to the extent that he was. When he was in Paris, he was pinching his arm. Maybe he didn't realize that he was doing it and it was just instinct, but it was sad to see, and it shows that it's most probably going to be something that carries through into the next season. We also saw that he wasn't really eating either. He mentioned that food was something that he felt as though he had control over when everything else was once spiraling out of control, and that was the fact that he would barely eat. This was why we saw Nick searching up the signs of an eating disorder, because Charlie is most definitely showing the signs of somebody that would have one, barely eating his food and lying about being full and eating in the past. So it's definitely going to be something that gets developed more in the next season of the show. The worried look on Nick's face as Charlie left his home was the true face that was underneath the mask of a smile that was there. He knows that it's most probably going to be a tough battle for Charlie to be able to process all of the trauma in a different way, but he wants to help him navigate his way through it. We saw that Charlie helped Nick all throughout this season by being alongside him every step of the way in his journey when it came to coming out, so Nick will most definitely want to do the same. Nick was on the cusp of telling Charlie that he loved him, but it was interrupted by his mother coming home, which is why the final thing that we saw in the show was Charlie writing I love you as a message to send to Nick, showing that he's finally found his sense of belonging and that person that he cares about more than anything and makes him feel special. So it's a positive yet extremely sad ending because of all of the underlying issues that are present. Tao and Del. I really enjoyed watching their story unfold in this season. We saw them battling with the progression of their relationship and if they would be able to function in a romantic sense. 
Tao spent a lot of the time trying to be somebody that he wasn't in order to impress Elle, and it actually had the opposite effect on Elle. She liked him for who he was and their differences as well as their similarities. However, on their first date, he did everything that he didn't like but everything that she did, and it was the most awkward date ever. It was only once they were in Paris and they went to the museum and did something that they both enjoyed together that their relationship started to flourish more, and the butterflies returned to their stomachs when around each other. They needed to be their true selves to be happy as one collective, which also included those differences. We saw that Elle was on the cusp of getting into her dream art school as she was accepted into it, something that Tao was slightly fearful of because he was worried that it would mean that their relationship would start to fizzle out. But in line with the narrative of their relationship, he was fully accepting of it by the end when she said that she wanted to go there because he knew that it was something that she was extremely passionate about and he didn't want to stand in her way. The season finished for them with them being together and being very much happy. Their true test will be in the next season when they're apart. Darcy and Tara This was an arc that was really interesting to watch and I was extremely invested in it. We saw that Tara told Darcy that she loved her, but the moment that she did, we saw that Darcy almost ignored it and tried to not address it ever again, even when Tara would bring it up. As the season went on, we saw the main reason as to why that was. Darcy was a completely different person when she was at school compared to when she's at home with her mother. Darcy hadn't come out to her mother and it was because she knew how she would take it. She felt like she'd never be able to because her mother had a picture of how she wanted her daughter to be and being with a woman didn't fit into that picture that her mother had. Hence why we saw Darcy become more and more distant because she was essentially leading two different lives and didn't want to promise something to Tara that she felt that she'd never be able to give her. The happiness of being around her family. It made sense as to why Tara had never been to Darcy's and it was because of Darcy's mother. At the end, with Darcy and Tara both telling one another that they loved each other and saying that they needed to keep saying it because practice made perfect, I hope that their story remains positive throughout the show. I imagine in the next season we're most likely going to be seeing more of Darcy's toxic home life and how she's going to be dealing with her mother moving forward because it's not something that's sustainable. Living at home like that and having to run away. Isaac Isaac's story was very clear from the beginning. He was the individual that was always on his own, and even with the way that the shots were framed and the looks that he would give, he was this lone individual that didn't ever want to look for romance or sparks with other people. He just enjoyed human connection on a personal level without intimacy, romance, or anything else. And this was something that was developed in this season. When he was at Elle's exhibition, he saw a piece of art that represented asexuality, and then he realized that maybe that's what he was, asexual. In the season finale, he picked up a book that was all about it and in true Isaac fashion got his nose straight into it. So I think he's going to be navigating his own mind as the next season goes on and growing comfortable in owning the fact that in his words, he doesn't need romantic drama. Overall review I thought this season of the show was really good. I actually preferred it to season one. We got to see all of the characters develop and we got to know them on a more personal level. I feel like in season 1, we mainly followed the narrative of Nick and Charlie, whereas in this season, I felt like we really got to delve into the mindset of everybody and understand their intentions, motives, and emotions. The cast absolutely smashed their roles and delivered convincing performances that allowed us to get invested in their personal development and journeys. The story was extremely well paced out and 8 episodes felt like the right amount of time to spend in the show with all of the characters. It didn't drag at all. Near on 30 minutes an episode was the perfect length and it's a formula that definitely worked. It tapped on the emotions in the right way and the heartfelt story of Heartstopper was extremely enjoyable to watch once again. So, there you have it. Heartstopper Season 2 Ending Explained What did you think of Season 2? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.